What's up everybody? My name is Rob Simmons and welcome to my channel. I am back with Team Star Kids of Fairy Power Senior Year, Act 2, Part 2, and 3. They're both short, Act 2 being 7 minutes long and Act 3 being less than 4 minutes long, so I figured it would make sense if I did them both in the same video. And I'm excited to see where the story goes with all the plot lines going on, so let's get to it. Scene 2. Lights up on Hermione who stands outside Gilderoy Lockhart's office. Well, here we go. This is my chance. This will show Ron. Hello, Mr. Lockhart. It's, it's me, Hermione Granger. Took you long enough. Get in here. Uh, whatever you say, Professor. I wanted to talk about these essays of yours. Oh, you've already read my Harry Potter essays. <laughs> yes, I think you have quite a gift. Your witty prose delivers a sophisticated humor packed with plenty of ghoulish giggles. Uh, that being said, this is awful, awful oh. work. What? I, I thought you liked it. I thought Ouch. it made you ghoulishly giggle. Giggle? Yes, but chortle hardly. Why, I can't even remember a single guffaw escaping my lips whilst reading this garbage, this trash. Oh, yes. This is just like one of my fanfics. All right, Hermione, here's your chance. Ron's gonna feel so stupid after this. Oh, yes. Scold me, Professor. <laughs> Teach me a lesson I him? won't ever forget. Oh, I intend to do just that. I'm going to teach you a thing or two about dramatic flow. In your Harry Potter essays, everything exciting happens in Harry's first and second years, but the rest of it is extremely boring. So, I've taken the liberty of tweaking your essays a bit. Oh, feel free to tweak anything you'd like, Professor. <laughs> I want oh, you to. Geez. Good, because I've tweaked plenty. I had to rearrange everything. I changed Voldemort, of course. He's arguably Harry's main villain, but in your story, he's defeated at the end of year two. That's moronic. Yeah, I made sure he was in it throughout and only gets beat at the end climax. Well, I'm sure that it's better. I'll bet you're really good at making things climax. Well, I did the best I could. <laughs> I did the best I could, but this one still stinks. Harry just bounces the killing curse back off him. It's lame, but hopefully I've killed enough side characters to make some people cry. Oh, you can make me cry. Oh, oh geez. my eyes are already wet. And that's not all. You're right, that's not all. <laughs> Wow. I'll tell you what else is boring about your stories. All these human characters. Why aren't any of these characters dogs? What? Do you have any idea how many people in the world are dogs? Why do you think Twilight sold like hotcakes? Because I had the wolf market cornered. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I guess I just don't know how to write for dogs. Maybe you could teach me a thing or two about doggy style, Professor. No, I can't. <laughs> no, if you don't know how to write for dogs by now, you'll never learn. I've already made the changes for you. I took one of the less interesting characters, Sirius Black, and turned him into a dog. You see, you have to give the pooches out there a character they can relate to. Throw him a bone, so to speak. Well, I wouldn't mind a bone. Quiet, you. <laughs> I also made Professor McGonagall a kitty, a fancy cat. And that Peter Pettigrew, he's a kindred spirit. I turned him into a mouse. All right, well, if you've already done everything, then why did you call me in here? I mean, didn't you want me? Don't you want me, Professor? Oh, boy. I do want you to sign this release form, turning over all creative rights of your Harry Potter essays. All right, fine. Can we talk about something other than Harry Potter now? Yeah. Great, let's get to know each other. I mean, you already know everything about me. I'm just a young, innocent girl who's never done anything crazy. But you, you're like a mystery. I mean, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your deepest fantasies? <laughs> My fantasies? Yes. Oh, Professor, if you if, wouldn't understand my fantasies. If you could do anything right here, right now, anything at all, who would it be? <laughs> if I could do anything? Yeah. 
Oh boy. <laughs> if I could do anything, I think I would shrink myself to the size of a mouse. I'd leave the world of men behind me forever and live amongst the mice. <laughs> and I would bring technology and, and art to those uncultured swine. And I would, I would build tiny tools for their mouse hands made from toothpicks and marshmallows. And I would be their king, nay, their prince. Gilderoy, the mouse prince. Ruling from my grand castle, inches high, carved from the finest cheeses. And there I would dwell with my three mouse wives. And my twelve mouse concubines. Oh, 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 but the wars we'd have with the frogs, terrible. Just terrible. Those meadow mice warriors. The atrocities they've seen. Yes. That is my dream. <laughs> Wow, he delivered a silly speech so seriously, so well. My secret dream. Wait a minute. I'm not alone. What the hell are you still doing here, Potter? Uh, I'm not Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, yeah? Then why do you dress like him? Uh, wh uh, You'll have to wake up pretty early in the morning to fool the mouse prince. Well, I'm going to sit down in my chair for the next 8 to 12 hours, and when I open my eyes, you better be... <laughs> what a f***ing idiot. <laughs> oh, why do you have to bleep the F-bomb? <laughs> hey, Ginny, what's up? Hmm? Is everything okay? Is that girl up to? <laughs> wow. Okay, I did not expect Hermione to flirt with Gilroy Lockhart. I mean, that really caught me off guard. I think the audience got kicked out of it too. And Gilroy's speech about being a mouse and living in a cheese castle, that was just golden. And why do I have a feeling that Gilroy is going to use his memory charm on Hermione? I hope it doesn't come to that. I left off an interesting note of Ginny being mind controlled, so let's get right into part three. Scene three. Lights up on the headmaster's office. Oh, another flashback. The place is no, in shambles. Flashback. Poor Ginny holds the diary in one hand and rips through drawers and cabinets with the other. Voldemort looks up at a portrait of Hogwarts former headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. Ah! Dumbledore! You old fool! I know that you hid the resurrection stone in here somewhere, and I'm gonna find it! Keep looking, Snave! Ginny, what is going on? Oh, shit! <laughs> get, get rid of her, get rid of her! Oh. The only Ginny can see Voldemort. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. She can't see me unless she touches the notebook. Just the same rules as Death Note. <laughs> they sure are. Anyway, I just thought I'd say that out loud for your benefit. <laughs> or anyone's, really. <laughs> the hell are you looking at me for? I said get rid of her. Ginny, destroying the headmaster's office is definitely against the rules. You know what? You've been acting like a real rule breaker ever since you got your hands on that diary. General. Wait a second. I remember. The Death Eaters were after that thing for some reason. You know what, Ginny? I think you'd better let me hold on to that. <laughs> Give me the diary, you spaz. <laughs> oh. Oh. Akio diary. <laughs> oh. Tom Marvalo riddle. Wait a second. If I take this letter and I put it there and I take that letter. <laughs> it reads, am I Lord Voldemort? <laughs> no, I am. She saw that being Lord quickly. Voldemort. No. No, you're dead. Nope. But Harry killed you. Double 
Dumbledore destroyed all the Horcruxes. Ah, Dumbledore only thought he destroyed all of the Horcruxes, but he missed one, one that was hidden until now. The diary. That's right, the journal. <laughs> that means that you're the heir of Slytherin. You're the one who's been letting out the Chamber of Secrets monster. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> so why are you petrifying everyone? You mean, besides for the fun of it? <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, but it's a red herring to keep you idiots distracted while I search for the real prize, the Resurrection Stone. And once I find it, I'll be back, and there's nobody left who can stop me. Now the bitch is back, and there's hell to pay. <laughs> you do realize now that I've completely divulged my evil plan. You have to be silenced. Uh-oh. Are you gonna, are you gonna kill me? No! Nope. He's gonna summon the snake. I think I'll just keep you on ice. Save you for later. Snave! Summon my giant snake. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and Hermione? I'd run if I were you. Get! <sighs> to anyone who finds this note, <sighs> destroy the diary! <sighs> wow. What? You ended like that? Oh, man. And then another clip here, but of course, that's how they keep us engaged. And so I have to say, that was another short, but another very strong part to this show. In fact, Two hilarious and strong parts to the show in one reaction. Can't complain if you ask me. I have to say, the actress who plays Ginny in the second one did a really great job acting like she was under my control. Like, <laughs> I, just, I just wish we actually saw the snake again, petrified Hermione, and something tells me that's exactly what was going to happen. But of course, we'll have to wait until next time to see for sure. But let me know in the comments what you think of both of these parts. Thank you for watching.